Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. We have here today a Truyville Bronco. I'm pretty sure this is around a 2017, but there's a lot of versions of this tractor out there. Today I'm going to show you, this came in with a uh, transmission belt or, or an issue. And as you can see, it's in forward gear right now and we should be locked in, it's not. So we are going to look into um, the transmission drive belt and fixing it. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the tools needed to that. Okay, so from left to right, uh, you need some kind of a stopping bar. I'm going to use a Phillips head screwdriver. It, the thickness is uh, it's a, just as thick as we need to get into the back of the transmission pulley, and I'll show you that in a second. I put this here too. This is a little thick, but anywhere around this, well, it just stops the pulley from moving. 3 8 socket with the ratchet. I want to use my electric ratchet, of course. This is a crow's foot. Okay, this is what we need to get a nut off the back of the top of the pulley. I think you might be able to buy these individually online. You need a 7 8 crow's foot, so we need one of them. A half inch to 3 8 adapter. You need a lot of leverage for what we're going to do. Uh, I have a long extension, a half inch extension, and a short half inch extension. And this is a very long breaker bar. This is a half inch breaker bar. You need leverage. We, if you need to use a pipe, use a pipe. Um, half inch ratchet if needed if you have one use this I try not to use this when I'm prying real hard because you can break the insides of your ratchet so you got to be careful this is a 7 16 and a 3 8 wrench that we're going to use to take the battery off also um, 7 7 16 wrench don't need both of them but just saying that you need them and this is a puller with a hook and this is going to help us with the spring getting the spring on and off below and then obviously uh, if you can't see you need a flashlight so let's get to it okay so the first thing we got to do is Take the battery out, it's the easiest way of doing it. Now this little guy here can be a really hard, it's like a spring-loaded tension bar. And what I try to do is I try to push, whoops, it just came off, it was just that easy. All right, so if, I, if you push the bar that way, it'll actually unlock it. And then when you put it back in, it's the same way. So I'm putting pressure on the bar and I'm pushing it the other direction and it comes right up just like so. And yes, this can be a pain in the butt. Sometimes your battery is bigger than not. So take that away. We have to take these off. This is where you need, it's either 10 millimeter or 3 8 I know there's a fact that um, it's normally, not a fact, but normally they're, they're 7 16 and 3 8 So we're going to go ahead and try to 3 8 Now be very careful when you take these apart. I'm very close to the metal over here. And when you take these off, you don't want to touch the metal. Because you will arc. And when you arc, that's not good. That will scare the heck out of you. Get the positive off. You can probably take off the negative first, and it may it'll still arc. I mean, if you if you hit positive to any of the metal around you, it's going to arc. So you got to be very careful. But we got to get this out of here. We're just going to put the bolts back there. And this should just come up out of there. Actually, you know what? This has a handle. And you can also use my hook tool too to get the batteries out. The the hook tool, if you have one, if you make a hook tool. It can, you can pull through the eyelet, you can pull them straight out. But this has a nice handle, we'll take it out. Okay, so now we're down to, I can see where the belt came off, which is right here. All right, and this belt is gonna, it's gonna have to go, we have to get these out, okay? And they're pretty, these are pretty, it's a pretty, it's cheap, but it's a nice feature. If there's a teeny little slot, let me take this out. You, you pull these up and you, these will come out. You can actually bend them and they'll come out. But when you put it back in, you see this little slot right here? Okay, it's designed to go in, put the one side in, you kind of tilt, you tilt them in, and then they have a slot. That little slot will just allow them to flop down. It's pretty nice. Pretty easy uh, as far as getting these things in and out. So you have to take, this is the battery hold down, I guess you call it. And you can just basically, you bend them out, they're pretty easy. All right, so down to, you might need a flashlight here. Okay, so down in here, there's a couple things, okay? There's, geez, let's see if this flashlight will stay. Anybody's got a really good magnet flashlight, I, I truly need one that works. This this magnet here is on this side, and so when you put it somewhere, it's like, it's never, it never sits where you want it. The hook, I don't know, I just need to maybe put one on my forehead to make it work better. Uh, but there's two different dry belts in here. You have one that comes from the front, this is this one here. Now, this pulley right here, this is a variable drive pulley, okay? The, the, the center pulley, it variates up and down. And so when you push on the pedal up front, 
it'll literally, it'll bring this pulley up and it makes the belts either go longer or shorter. And that's how, this is a two speed, two speed transmission. So that's how it operates. The, the shorter, I think it's the faster it goes and the, the longer, um, the slower it goes, but it's a variable drive system. That's how it works. This one came off and it's, it's real hard. You cannot get, this is really gonna be hard to show you, but you cannot get the belt on this pulley because the frame's in the way, all right? And it, trust me, I've tried it every single way to try to pinch it through there and it just, you'll hurt the belt. You'll, you'll literally pinch the belt so tight you can actually hurt the belt. So we have to get this belt back on this pulley. And also, let me show you up front here. If you can see this, if you can get down in there, and there's a pulley up front, way up here, okay? And it has a spring attached to it. And maybe we can get an angle here underneath the tractor. Let me see if I can get another angle here. Okay, so the pulley's right here. Okay, and the belt goes, the belt is not off of there. This one's a pretty hard one for the belt to jump off. There's actually a guide over here. And you can see that the spring attaches here. Where is it at here? So we have a spring that comes across from this arm and it goes underneath underneath the arm and it goes over to side of the frame right here and we have to take this off so we can get the belt back on again so the first thing i'll do is get the uh the hook tool i need one of these a little bit longer but what we're going to do is you're going to put the hook tool in there and then we're going to pull that out and then let it go back okay and we have to Okay, so it's jammed up because that pulley, this pulley is actually stuck on the frame. All right, so I'll just let that go because we need that slack to go all the way off. All right, so now we have the slack off. We're gonna go around to the top again. And what we need to do is we need to get this, this big pulley off. And this has been a challenge until I found out that a crow's foot really works well. Let me get this set up. So my setup for me is I have a half inch, my crow's foot is a 3 8 drive. So I have a half inch adapter because you need leverage. Half inch adapter to very long extensions. And then I'm gonna put this down inside here. It's a 7 8 nut. Now, as far as the, uh, the bars that I was telling you about, the Phillips head screwdriver, it's counterclockwise to take this nut off. So you wanna get this you can see a hole in the pulley and I'm going to use that hole to my advantage by putting it by putting the Phillips head screwdriver in front of the bar this is this bar here and down through the slot and then down into the transmission area I've already checked under there there is no obstructions that actually hurts anything but we need the leverage to get this nut off so at this point you're going to put the crow's foot on and you're going to Turn it counterclockwise, and it's right now it's pretty stuck. So this is where our large breaker bar goes on top here. And then you're gonna, with all your might, that wasn't too bad actually. All right, so pretty much those nuts can be very tight. I almost think maybe somebody was in here. All right, but basically you just take that, you crack that loose, and you should be able to, then by hand, you may have to take it a couple turns should be able to take this nut off. Once, they, once they're loose, they're not too bad to get off. Okay, now, all right, so down inside here, if you take this pulley off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this off to the side, just enough that we can get the belt on. Now what I'm gonna do is get the belt on the back pulley now I can see I'm hanging up here a little bit. I'm turning this a little bit sideways. Okay, if you can see down inside here, I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's a little star-shaped collar. And then the pulley also has a star-shaped collar on it. So you wanna make sure that this lines up with this when you put it back on. All right, so what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna put the belt on the back of the, the uh, this is the variable speed drive back here. Make sure this is actually spinning and there's nothing wrong with it. Make sure that's okay. Now, when you're doing both of the dry belts at once, you wanna take off, this is where you take off the bottom belt here, and you can kind of manipulate that up and around the pulleys, 
and then you take that off the front and you can get that to the front so if you're doing both belts make sure that you get the the front with the one that goes from the engine to the transmission make sure you do this one first and then you come back around and do this one and you're just gonna put it right in the back you can actually get the belt behind the uh the idler there the, the uh, variable drive right there i like to put that on first so it'll give me a little bit of room to put this one now we have this one on the v-pulley now remember the flat part of the belt goes on the flat part of any pulley and the v part of the belt goes on the v part of a pulley and these are both v pulleys so you have to make sure that you have the, the v on it now i'm going to try to get this back on a star now that right there so you see how the the star right there is okay so it's it's on there now and it's nice and flat and flush and it's in in the grooves then you're going to put the nut back on and we're going to tighten that up the same way i took it off we're going to put the since we're going the opposite direction i'm going to put the phillips head screwdriver and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten this so we're going to go the opposite direction we're going to go clockwise And there may be a torque on this. I'm going to put this on as tight as I can without you know, too much force. But I'm also using a very large breaker bar to give me very good leverage. Okay, so that is very tight. And then you just wanna make sure that you're on both the transmission pulley, you're inside the V, the uh, variable drive, which you are. And you wanna make sure there is, like I said, inside this variable pulley, there is a middle pulley that spins and it moves up and down so the lower belt must be on the lower v and then the upper belt is on the upper v and that's a little hard to explain that but then you have the your other arm down all the way down here that has that spring attached to it and that spring will not fall off because it's actually it's on a bolted part right here with a washer on it so now we have to get this spring to tighten up this tension this is where you're going to come around and it may be easier from up there to see, I'm not sure, but you have to find the spring right here and make sure that you get your belts out of the way. It comes underneath, underneath here now. I see, I don't know if you can get that with my finger on it, but we have to get that with the hook. And so I'm gonna go in here and look through the top. Now my hook is a little short. I wish I had something a little bit longer. Okay, so you really have to get that spring. My hook is just a little short, but I got it. Okay, and you want to make sure that that belt that's above it, one, you can see the wear marks on that spring, that's normal. That's just, just where that belt is actually just sitting. And you have to pull through the frame, and this is the tricky part, is pulling it through the frame. And then getting it into the other hole. Got it hooked on the wrong side. I'm gonna try to tap tap this in here. That is a very strong spring. I definitely recommend having a, uh, probably this tool needs to be two times as long. So if you can make something that's a little bit longer than that, that you can get a good pull on, but that's very tight spring. So let's go back up to the top and see this. Okay, so everything is now back to running as it should. I didn't replace the belt because the belt popped off. Not sure why, I'm gonna take it out for a run now. And if it needs to be, if I need to replace everything, I will. But I just wanted to show you guys how to put this rear drive belt on because I know a lot of you guys ask about this. And I see a little bit of wear, but there's nothing, there's no major cracks at all. The belt seems to be good. It's in gear, I'm, I'm turning it right now. It's actually moving the machine. And you just gotta make sure that everything is back to where it came from. That spring is a little tricky. Make sure that you're, you're okay on this top pulley up here, which is all the way up in there. You see that pulley up there? It has a guide. That guide up there that's behind that pulley is extremely tight. 
to the belt. So normally they never pop there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery back in. So these little guys there, like I said with the tabs, they're designed to angle and go down in there. And I'm gonna do this one the opposite direction, the other way. So we're gonna angle it, go back down in there. And these are pretty easy to get out. And then I do remember that the positive was on this side. And when you put the battery in, as you can see this little cutout right here, that little cutout is where the wire is just supposed to move freely. So use that cutout. Don't just jam your, don't just have, if you have, if you put the battery in and the cables are pinched, not good. You don't want the cables to be pinched anywhere. And then you're just gonna negative, negative, positive, positive. And I'm gonna put the uh, positive on first this time. And be very careful, like I said, about using wrenches near the seat area, especially with positive being this close to the seat, is that you can arc them really quickly. And it'll scare the heck out of you. Normally it doesn't do any damage as long as you the arc is small. And it's, I mean, not small, but it's short. You don't, if you, if the arc, if, if you ever have one welded, I've actually welded with wrenches before. I'm just going to use the wrenches here since I got them. 7 16 on one side, 3 8 on the other. And this is the way it came from the factory. Normal nuts and bolts usually have the same size head on both sides, but these guys don't. And I'll we'll just tighten these up. And I'll go ahead and put the strap. Probably could have put the strap in first to hold the battery in, but it should be pretty straightforward. Go through here like this. Put this side in first here. And then like I said, you push it to the other side while you're pushing down and it should lock itself in. And I have had problems where the batteries are just a little bit higher and man, these things can be a pain. But, and, and make sure you, make sure they're tight. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I do appreciate everybody watching my videos. Please subscribe, tell your friends, and I will catch you on the next one.